I hope my son's antics don't disturb you. Madam, were it in my power to sentence him to 30 days hard labor, they would not disturb me in the slightest. Smashing day for it. On holiday? No. Oh, Leslie. Uh, it isn't true. Oh, oh big pardon, ma'am. Miss. Yes, of course, yes. Have to be, wouldn't it? Damn fool. I suppose I'll be expected to tend to his wounds after he piles up, and I don't fear that. No one injured, at least. No apparent damage to the cars. Young fool must lead a charmed life. That's the lot. My money's on the servants. The servant's usually always the guilty one in the end. Welcome to Sticklehaven, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Davis, the Harbour Master. Sorry. Waiting for me. That's everyone, then. The other bags are already on board the boat there. Blimey. It must be him. In the flesh. All set, Nerikot. Ready, sir. Right. I'll leave it to you then. Seas calm. Should be a pleasant crossing. If you leave now, there's a squall coming. I can smell it. Why is it called Shipwreck Island? Well, the weather can turn nasty quickly. There are many submerged rocks, lots of wrecks hereabouts. And that big rock at the tip is said to resemble a beached schooner. The locals call it Ship Rock. You're not from around these parts, then, Mr. Naraka? No, sir, I'm not. It'll never work. If you would be so good as to follow that path up to the house, my wife will show you to your rooms. I expect you'd all like to freshen up after your journey. Where's Fred? Under the weather. I took his place. You'd be the brother then. I see the resemblance. Will you help me with the bags? Yes. I've been hoping to get a look at the house. Chapter 1. Ten little sailor boys went out to dine. One choked his little self, and then there were nine. Thank you for your assistance, Mr. Narricot. Everything and everyone nicely in place. I must say, I don't much like these clouds. I expect you should be heading back without delay.
Now it begins. Don't worry, Fred. I won't let you down. Oh, just a drizzle. It's going to get much worse. Scuttled. I wonder who would have done such a thing. Mr. Narakot, why are you still on the island? Someone scuttled my boat. Scuttled? Wrecked, you mean? But who on earth would do such a thing? I intend to find out. But that means, who will come for us on Monday? Unless this storm lets up, no one. Dear me, dear me. Come in, come in. You'll catch your death out here. I must help my wife prepare dinner. I'll have her fix you up something in the kitchen. Thank you. Where he's going to sleep, I'll never know. Ethel won't like this one bit. I copied the contents into my notebook. Ten little sailor boys. Charming. It'll never work, I tell you. We should never have agreed. A house party only a week after we arrive? And no other help? Ethel, calm yourself. You promised me. Never again, you said. How was I to know? Oh, ah, Mr. Narakot. Uh, Ethel will be preparing you a meal in here once the guests are served. Mr. Rogers, I was wondering if I might have a word. If you'll forgive me, sir, I'm far too busy to talk with you at present. There are some batteries buried under here. I should have thought of that sooner. The larder is very well stocked. It's a press. Looks like it can hold quite a large amount of fruit. Would you just look at all these silk sheets? All embroidered GS. I'll bet that was that actress who used to live here. But I've dropped them on this filthy floor. Can I give you a hand, Mrs. Rogers? Thank you, Mr. Narricot. You seem like a good sort. I'm sorry for your boat.
I copied the contents into my notebook. I copied the contents into my notebook. It would certainly be noticed if I rifled through his luggage. I better not. I copied the contents into my notebook. Nothing out of order in here. I'd best not take anything, though. I'm sure he would notice. Once a bent copper, always a bent copper. Right, Fred? You're talking through your hat. You were the Purcell gang's inside man on the force, not my brother. Your brother? Don't try to kid me, Fred. There's still a handsome reward out for you. Fred is my brother. I'm Patrick Fane. No reason for me to believe you that I can see. There's still a big reward out for Fred Fane. You scuttled my boat to trap me here. You recognize me, too. I saw it in your eyes. Only because Davis showed Fred the passenger list yesterday. I came in my brother's place. We didn't think you might mistake me for him. Fred is eight years older than me. Look closely, Blore. You do look young. I noticed that. Thought it must be the Sierra. You were taking the Purcells bribes for years. After the Landor case, people began to ask questions. The Purcells needed what the Yank detective novels call a fall guy. My brother was framed. You were in the clear. Your whole story sounds like a detective novel. I've never stopped trying to clear Fred's name and put you in Dartmoor prison where you belong. Thanks to your greed, I may now have that chance. Maybe you're Patrick, maybe you're Fred. I don't know, and I don't much care. You're either a criminal, or you've been harboring one all these years. I wonder what my fellow guests will think of that. Go on, Mr. Narricot. Hop it. I need to prepare for dinner. Mr. Narcot, I thought that you'd left us. Someone scuttled my boat. Oh, but that's dreadful. Surely the harbour master will send another boat when you're missed. Not in this storm, I'm afraid. And even then, it won't be reported. Why ever not? My brother. He knew I might not be immediately back. I'm terribly sorry for your trouble. The Owens should be arriving shortly. I'm sure you can get a ride back in that boat. If you'll excuse me, I must get ready for dinner. Narakot? I thought you'd be long gone by now. That storm's getting pretty fierce. Somebody scuttled my boat. I saw Blore watching you like a hawk eyes its dinner. Could it have been him? Possibly. Any idea why? I'd rather not say. Suit yourself. I'd better get ready for dinner. Yes? Oh, Mr. Narakot. I had a question for you. Uh, have you heard anything in Sticklehaven about this house being set up as a guest house? No, Miss Brent. No, Mrs. Rogers hasn't either. And who are the Owens? I haven't met them yet. Uh, would it surprise you to learn neither have Mr. and Mrs. Rogers? 
It's odd. Very odd. If you'll excuse me, Mr. Narakot, I must make dinner preparations. My wife is indisposed and not receiving visitors today. Your wife, sir? What? Your wife? My wife, yes. Leslie. I I'm sorry, my boy. I was wool gathering miles away. My apologies. <clears throat> Must dress for dinner now. Send my orderly to me, if you will. I... No, 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 that's not right. What was I thinking? I must get ready for dinner now. Locked. You're shot, Judge. Yes. You haven't left me much, I confess. I knew judges listened to confessions. I never knew they made them as well. Oh, some judges may have cause. Some doctors as well, I expect. That sounds like the dinner bell. Mr. Narricot, unfortunately, we are not prepared for your presence at dinner. I would be most happy to deliver you a sandwich later this evening, if that will do. That will be fine, Rogers. Thank you. Excellent. Now, if you will excuse me, I must get to serving. By all means. I can hear them all in the dining room chattering. I can't quite make out what they're saying. This might be a good time to explore the house more thoroughly. Aha! With my ear against the door, the conversation becomes quite clear. Wine, doctor? No, thank you, Rogers. I never touch alcohol. Except for sterilizing wounds or instruments, of course. I tried to collect some apples from an orchard on the island, but a bee stung me. I'm afraid I dropped the basket and ran. No need to apologize. I myself am dreadfully allergic to bees, wasps, hornets. I'm sorry to hear there are bees here. Oh, you must take care. There's all sorts of those bee house things. What do you call it? An apiary. Oh, I thought that was for monkeys. Ethel. Miss Claythorne. We've never met, but I do seem to recall your name. Oh? Yes. From when I stayed at that stuffy old hotel near St. Trednick. Do you know it? No. No, I don't think so. Really? How extraordinary. I was so shocked. Narricot says he's not Fred Fane, but his brother. It may well be, but he bears watching. Seems like such a nice man. They said the same thing about Stevenson, the child murderer. I confess I've never met our host, Mr. Owen. What kind of a man is he? Rogers? We haven't seen the Owens either, sir. We were only engaged a week ago by letter and asked to make the house ready. So no one has actually met the Owens. How extraordinary. I, for one, will have some sharp questions for the Owens when they do arrive. These are very expensive linens. I bet they're very strong. I don't think going through that would help. Either he's innocent, in which case I'd be grossly invading his privacy, or he's guilty and surely wouldn't be daft enough to leave any evidence in his luggage. I copied the contents into my notebook. I copied the contents into my notebook. It's a marble sculpture of an elephant.
this clock has stopped. I transcribe the pertinent passages in my notebook. It would certainly be noticed if I rifled through his luggage. I better not. It's a chair. It doesn't look very comfortable. I guess Owen made sure no clocks in the house are working. This one is stopped. I copied the contents into my notebook. I'd almost swear I recognize that chap. Does he have the eyes of a killer? I copied the contents into my notebook. I copied the contents into my notebook. This is a fairly sparse makeup case. Vera isn't the type to use much makeup, though. I think I recognize this lady. Perhaps she owned the house in the past. Who knows? She may still. I copied the contents into my notebook. This is quite a makeup supply. Emily must be more concerned with aging than she lets on. It's a small waste paper bin. It's empty. I copied the contents into my notebook. It appears to be a portrait of the general. Must be quite old. He's standing with a very young woman. It's signed, To John, My Husband, Leslie. Let me examine this further. Nothing else to see about that. This bears a closer look. I copied the contents into my notebook. I don't need it, and I'm no pack rat.
Aha! With my ear against the door, the conversation becomes quite clear. Did anyone else see the poem over the fireplace? Ten little sailor boys? Yes, I saw it. And here before us as the centerpiece of our table are the ten little sailor boys themselves, all looking correct and polished. I like a neat and tidy house, Your Honor. Robson, the man who built this house, was a sailor. Perhaps Mr. Owen inherited them from him. Another question for Mr. Owen. Uh, as I remember, the rhyme was about soldier boys. Highly inappropriate, as I recall. There are many variations. You seem to know quite a bit about it, Miss Claythorne. I... I was a governess before seeking secretarial work. Governesses spend a lot of time with nursery rhymes. All gratuitously gruesome, if you ask me. So much violence in the world today. Sometimes violence is necessary, Miss Brent. There speaks a soldier for you. A realist, Miss Brent, not a dreamer. If action needs to be taken, I, for one, am fully prepared to take it. How does the famous rhyme go, Miss Claythorne? Must we harp on this topic at dinner? Miss Brent may be right, Mr. Marston. The rhyme is a bit gruesome. It's there over the fireplace in the parlour if you care to have a look later. If you think so. Excellent meal, Rogers. My compliments to both you and your good woman. You've done your employers proud. Thank you, sir, ladies and gentlemen. Most gratifying, I'm sure. After dinner drinks will be served in the front parlor. Ladies and gentlemen, silence please. This is your host, UN Owen. You are charged with the following indictments. Edward George Armstrong, that you did upon the 14th day of March 1925, cause the death of Louisa Mary Clee. Emily Caroline Brent, that upon the 5th of November 1931, you were responsible for the death of Beatrice Taylor. William Henry Bloor, that you brought about the death of James Stephen Landor on October 10th, 1928. Vera Elizabeth Claythorne that on the 11th day of August 1935, you killed Cyril Ogilvie Hamilton. Philip Lombard, that upon a date in February 1932, you were guilty of the death of 21 men, members of an East African tribe. John Gordon Mackenzie, that on the 4th of January 1917, you deliberately sent your wife's lover, Arthur Richmond, to his death. Anthony James Marston, that upon the 14th day of November last, you were guilty of the murder of John and Lucy Combe. Thomas Rogers and Ethel Rogers, that on the 6th of May 1929, you brought about the death of Jennifer Brady, Lawrence John Wargrave, that upon the 10th day of June 1934, you were guilty of the murder of Edward Seaton. Prisoners at the bar, have you anything to say in your defense? Doctor! I only fainted, Rogers. I'm sure she'll be fine. Narricot, will you get my bag from my room? Yes, of course. Stout fellow, master, in a moment I'll want help to get her to her room. Of course. Behind the kitchen, is it, Rogers? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> 